Hi everyone, Messi Coder here with a very quick tutorial. I want to talk to you about Text Mesh Pro. Reason why is because I'm doing a new series on how to make a game like Tropico using Unity. That's why it's going to be fantastic, a lot of fun. But to do that, I need to start playing about with some extra fun things. One of those is Text Mesh Pro. So. Uh, let's pop over here to Unity, and as you can see, I'm inside Unity, it's a lot of fun. And I want to just zoom in. I've got some normal elements here, uh, text elements, in that canvas. If I open up canvas, UI, main menu, and I've got here menu, and I've got a settings. You'll see if I keep delving, and I delve, and I delve, and I delve, I've got a label. I've also got some buttons, and I've got some controls. So my label is looks a bit different over here because it's a text mesh pro label it's not a normal text label my volume here these these labels here that i've got if i can find this label you'll see that is also a text mesh pro but this button this button is just a normal text button oh dear looks all right from here though doesn't it but what happens when we start zooming in and i scroll my very cheap mouse you'll see that while this label here for my sound effects still looks magnificently beautiful, oh, it does. The text for my apply button, oh, looks very bad indeed. So it's all gone pixely, pixely wixely. And that's because this text uses pixels to, to make it look like text, whereas this one uses something else entirely, something that I can pretend that I understand, but I don't really. It's called signed distance thingy it's so beautiful no matter how much you zoom in it doesn't get any worse it's all about well i've got so sorry, i try to pretend i understand but i don't really know what it, how it works it's all about how relative space one um thing is from another so it doesn't use pixels it uses these thingamajigs and it says how far one is from the other no matter how much i zoom in then it still looks beautiful and it is fantastic it's one of those things that i don't really care that i don't know how it works i just know that it's beautiful it just doesn't get bad it always looks wonderful and i think that in itself is magnificent but that's not all it's beautiful about text mesh pro look at this wonderful text i've got up here it's got some weird funky gradient to it it's even got an outline to it and it's got a little bit of an inner glow has it well you look down here and i've got here a dark inner glow and i could change that inner glow to a nice yellowy inner glow and i could make the offset make it into an outer glow and I could go innery, outery, squiggly. And look at that. I don't really like it, but look, it looks a bit like Game of Thrones. Oh, <gasps> Game of Thrones. So, what else can we do? We can, and don't forget, you can always stick the texture on stuff as well. We can make bump maps. We can do old lighting. There's bevelage going on. So many wonderful things that we could do. I just click a button, and immediately it looks like I'm playing about a Photoshop, but I'm not. Look at that. Oh my word, oh my word indeed. But rather than me just play about, I don't really have the time. I don't have the time to play about and make it. So what I'll do is, I'll show you how I add it in. Because I got I downloaded these fonts off, off, off the internet. These are nice free fonts that I downloaded off the internet. And I made some, look, SDFs, SDFs. Remember what I said, that sign distance function thingy? That's what that stands for. And if I pop over here, so we've got here font size. I'm just going to leave an auto size when I do my stuff, but you can use custom size if you want to put a size in. Font padding default is five, and they say five is good if you've got this 512 by 512 resolution, and it tends to be good enough for people. But the more padding you have, the better quality, the better spacing you have between your fonts, and more spacing for the gradient, the finer the quality is going to be. So if you want nice special effects and big fancy fonts, then you're going to make these a bit bigger, make your atlas resolution bigger as well. Generally, though, I, don't, I tend to not need it. I think five's good enough. Packing method, uh, if you're mucking around just testing, leave it on fast, and when you finalize your settings, switch over to optimum and then generate your fonts. But for just testing, you can leave it on fast. ASCII character set, I put it on mine on extended, um, but it depends what characters you're going to be using, if you're going to be having nice little accents and things. And you could even say, hey, just have a lowercase if I want to have a smaller font file, or uppercase, or numbers and symbols. So it depends what you're using your fonts for. If you don't want to have these big font files, you could go smaller and smaller and, and detailed, specific as you want. 
I love it. Font style again, you can have a font style of bold, you can have italic, bold italic, and then you can bundle all these together. Uh, it recommends that you do uh, have separate ones, so you have uh, one main font and then you can break it down to have uh, subsets. You've got multiple font assets per font. Um, but if you want to know more about what all these different modes are, I do suggest you pop over to the Text Mesh Pro's website and you just read the, the guides. They've got so much information online that really anything you want to find out, you can find it. If I just click Generate Font Atlas, you see how quick it is. Off, here we go. And if I may put this over here to uh, Optimum, and hey, let's change this to be extended here we go we've got 94 and 99 characters packed um, it says me here my size 82 and I click again generate font atlas we'll see how much longer it takes not that much longer to be honest not that much longer at all and there we go off now we've got 183 out of 306 so now I can click save and then I stick it in my folder and there it is there's my fonts magical and here we're down here, we've got missing characters. I like the fact that it tells me what characters we've got missing. Like I would ever use any of these. But hey, you might want to have um, this thing here or stuff like that. So it's nice to see that they're missing from this font set. Oh no, the euro sign's missing. And if I right click, there's other things I can do. I can right click, create, find my text mesh pro. Where are you hiding, text mesh pro? Where are you? Where are you hiding? Text mesh pro. There it is. It's up here at the top. I can make a sprite asset color gradient and a style sheet color gradient I loved loved color gradient why because I can just choose here now color gradient it's good to actually do it when you've applied it to something because otherwise it's a bit weird I'll show you what we'll do we'll click on this label here this one here I'll go down see here color gradient of tickets and I've got two options I can either use a preset or make one by hand and I can just go on the top left to be that color and I'm on the top right to be this color here and I want bottom left to be this color and I want the bottom right to be this color over here now I've got this color vertex here and that's getting in the way so I'm gonna put that back up to white put it back up to white and now now I can see my gradient see it's multicolored beautiful but it doesn't really help so let's make this something that actually is usable let's go bottom white it's gonna be I'll tell you what we'll do I just drag this little color picker and I'll say, hey, you, I want you. See, it's wonderful. I go here for the top left. Let's pick up. Let's do that again. But this time, let's go up, make it light. And for this one here, I'll do the same thing. You could just grab the hex color, but I didn't. And then we've got this little green gradient going in. That looks lovely. Doesn't that look lovely? Or I could just drag in my color gradient and now, my color gradient, I would say, I want you to be purplish up the top. And I'm going to grab this hex here, and I'm going to put my hex there. Or I could go here and say, and then the bottom's going to be this light bit here. I can make this preset if I want by clicking that. And I go over here, and then I just click on that preset again. So there's different ways that you can just carry your fonts across. And now, I've got a gradient here. And then I can just go over to this graphics, and I can go and drag in my, oh, I need to click the button first. I can drag in my color gradient. Don't forget, make this nice and white so I can see through it. And there you go. And if I wanted to then say, I didn't like that, but I don't want to go one by one and change them all. I can just click on this gradient here. And then I'll say, actually, the top should be red. And now everything that had that gradient is changed like magic. That is fantastic. That's not all. That's not, you think that's all. It's not all. That's not all. This thing does loads of crazy stuff. But like I just delete that and it goes back to the what I had previously, which was this green. Oh, wow. Let's pop over to the scenes that you get with Text Mesh Pro. It's in the examples and extras and the scenes. What? Look how many scenes you get. I'm looking down here. So you can see my eyes. Looking down here, you get 25, and then you get some benchmark ones. I'm just going to go, because we've already, like, you know, we can play about here. I could click on this one, and I could just show you how. Uh, I'm just giving away too many things here at the moment. Let me get back into this font here. Where are you? Where are you, Mr. Font? There you are. There you are. Now I can just go and say, all right, then I want to have an underlay enabled. 
enable my underlay. Come on, underlay. Underlay, underlay, arriba, arriba. I can go here, and that's a drop shadow. Look at that. Here. Oh, make it softer. Lovely. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's fantastic. That is really nice. Make that a bit bigger. 50. Oh, that didn't make any difference whatsoever. But there you go. Look at that. But instead of doing that, let's just pop over to this. Text Mesh Pro Title. It's number 25. Went straight to number 25. That's what I do straight to the bottom. But look how many there are. There are single lined, text mesh pro, multi lined, line justification, word wrapping. So if you want to know how to do like the stuff, you come here. Style tags are uh, very great. It's very interesting here. We've got look at all these. Look at them all. Underlines, uh, strike throughs, sizes, colors, line heights. Oh, you name it. It seems to have it. If I click play, let's see what happens when I click play. It shows you all of the basic style tags of Idle One Takes Match Pro. Very interesting indeed. Don't want to wake up, don't fall asleep. Trust me, this kind of funky stuff will really help you once you start me making some fancy games. Um, but you want to see some nice, big, shiny things, don't you? You like to see shiny things. Let me show you something shiny. So I've got here, I've got my lighting enabled here so you can see that lighting makes a difference. If I turn that off, you see, oh, it's shiny. But here, oh, wonderful. And if I grab one of these, lights let's grab this one here and let's move it let's move it. go closer you can see and move it oh oh it is actually look it's updating making a difference let me do this orangey one oh look oh i don't even got here let's actually get out of 2d mode and so you can see not only have we got our oops oopsie daisies we've got our shadow moving of the text but you can see the light is actually reflecting off the text and it's changing it's changing the shadows on the beveling and you think oh my god look how many polys this is going to need no it's not it's not actually it's not it's still exactly the same as it was before look at that now go zoom in oh popped it is amazing truly something magnificent if i go over here and i change this text and i say and look here, look at this, size 12, plus 12 for the T. And then we've got X, and then we grow another size plus 12 for the M, and we've got the Esh, it's normal. And Pro is going to be this color. And if we say, uh, let's go there, like 36. Wow, it's so big, it's so big. And if we change that to be an M, mixed, mixed. Tesh Pro. Yeah. Let's just move that along. See? It's actually real. It's not pre-baked and any of that shenanigans. Really, this stuff really does blow my mind. It really does. If we just... Um, tell you what. Well, we've made our Pro pop down to the other line. Let's get rid of this caption here because we don't need that. It's getting in the way. Don't like you. Go away. Boom. And let's... We go and we see the shader. You see here, I've got a texture for my face, a texture for my outline, and I've got texture for my bump map, and I've got my glow here. So we can, we got lighting here. We could be a red if we wanted. No, no, so I'll undo. I don't want to change these because I'll be breaking this material. If we select the material, you can see here it is, Bangers SDF logo, and here's the material. So I don't want to do that. I want to make my own one. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say create material presets and boom I've got a new one here and if I at the moment it's exactly the same because it's inherited the other one so I can now if I want to I can even rename this one I could change this one to be bangers messy SDF logo and now if I go back to my text and I say here, I've got material presets. Look, messy SDF logo. Here it is. And there's different ones that you can you get with the kit, so you can play about. Look, oh, that's lovely. Then we go back to his one. Let's go to my one. Here's my one. And if we find my image, my background, we'll drop him in. Look at that. Look at that. It's got both of the lines. I've got it, and you can see each letter has the same background. We want to just quickly, I'm just going to quickly show you something. I can change this to be 
line. So the whole line now has my image. Or I could change it to be paragraph. Or I could change it to be a character or match the aspect. But let's go to uh, line and we'll go line. There we go. Or we could go paragraph, paragraph. But we're going to go line, line. And here, this little offset. If I get rid of this offset, you'll see that, well, you can't really see because it's so small, but trust me, they start around the same time, same height. So if I go 0.3, you see it's offset a little bit. It mixes it up a little bit, mixes it up a tad. And I love this. I love this speed setting here. I love this speed setting. I'm going to 0.05, uh, 0.05, and it <laughs> doesn't like that there. If I click play, if I click play, what are we going to get? Oh, we're going to get it moving. We're going to get it moving. Oh, wonderful. Look at that. That just blew my mind when I saw that. That blew my mind when I saw it. But you do have a little bit of an issue here because our image gets to this point and it just goes stretchy, blurry, stretchy out. Do need to play that. So just tweak that. But, my word, the fun things that we could do with Text Mesh Pro, the fun things that we could do. But I have to emphasize, this is free. This is free. It doesn't cost you any money and it's part of Unity now. But look at this. I'm going to click play. Oh, look at that. Look at that. And I'm getting 160 uh, FPS. Now, apparently, what the developer says is that the text in TextMesh Pro is as good, if not better, on performance than the standard text that you get in Unity. In Unity? In Unity, even. In Unity. So how do you, can you complain about that? Oh, my word. This is simply fantastic. And it's going to be part of my series that I'm using that I'm going to be making how to make a game with Tropico. So I'm not going to delve into it too much, but I will show you how you can use things like, let's pop back over. Let's pop back over to my demo scene. So I want to show you what we'll be playing about with in this series. I'm just doing a very quick menu using some elements made with Text Mesh Pro. Uh, this menu here is a Text Meshy Pro menu. If I click Options, see this? here these drop downs these are populated at runtime and they are text mesh pro drop downs which are pretty much the same thing as the unity drop downs it just means that these text elements in here they're text press text press pesh text mesh pro text so um, if i zoom in and i go to the scene and i zoom in zoom 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 you will see that the text here still looks beautiful. And that's because it's text push. What text push? You cannot say text mesh pro without getting that wrong. Wrong. And not even every word wrong after that. But you see, look, the menu itself looks bad compared to this. Everything should be done in this style. It's amazing. It really is amazing. It just it highlights how better this text is compared to everything else. Really? Your text is the sharpest thing in your game I'm using T M P. That's what I'm going to call you from now on. TMP. you got to have a TMP if you want to make a game with me. There you go. Nothing going on but the text. And that's it for this video. Very quick, I just wanted to show you what Text Mesh Pro was so you can play it yourself. And I'll look forward to seeing you when we're going to be making this menu together. So if you do like these videos, don't forget to tell all of your friends, your neighbours, random people on the street about them and to say that they can follow me also on Twitch, which is all the W's dot Twitch dot TV slash the Messy Coder on Twitter dot well, Twitter dot com. But people say at mess, the Messy Coder if you're going to do the Twitter stuff. So I have to get down with the cool kids and you know where to find me on YouTube. So if you do like it, click it. Till next time. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.